Hey guys, what's happening? I got a request from a user who wanted to know how that he could use his Arduino Pro Micro as a keyboard emulator. Now, the reason that that will work is because the Pro Micro, also the Leonardo and the Due, have the 32U4 chip, the Atmega 32U4, which differs from the Uno, which of course has the ATmega 328P and the, the Mega, which has the, was it 2560, I think it's called. So this one has a built-in USB transceiver. And when you plug it in, it communicates directly via the USB bus, just like a USB keyboard. So we can add some buttons and emulate a keyboard or a mouse. So here's our setup. We have the Nano. It's outputting five volts and ground to our bus rail. We have three tactile switches. They are plugged into pins three, four, and five, and they go to ground. Now, generally you want to use uh, resistors when you have a switch set up like this. We're using the internal resistors in this chip, and I'll show you how to do that in the setup, which we're going to go look at right now. All right, here is the code for our Arduino keyboard emulation. And keep in mind, this only works with the Leonardo, a Due, or a Pro Micro because you need to have an Arduino that uses that 34U2 chip. It has the built-in USB transceiver. The Uno, the Mega, they don't have it. So just keep that in mind. Now, the first thing is you're going to need to include keyboard.h but you don't need to download it. This is a core library. You just need to call it. So make sure you include keyboard.h. You see we're not declaring any variables or anything here. This is really simple. Next in our setup we're going to set all of our pins to input pull up. What that does is that pulls the pins high with an internal resistor so that when we click the button the pins go low they're pulled to ground and the program reads the button press so we do that for all our pins I'm using three pins here next we have a serial begin and I always use that for debugging it's useful to see what's going on alright here's the main loop of our program the first line is keyboard.begin that starts the keyboard now usually we use these begin things up here in the setup but with this you kinda wanna keep it in the loop of the program so that you can turn the keyboard emulation on and off as you need it otherwise it could take control of your keyboard and you could have problems so next we say if digital read 3 equals 0 which means if button 3 is pressed <laughs> then we are going to send a character. In this case we're going to use a capital A and the command is keyboard dot write uh, single quote marks there not double A. And of course we end every line with a semicolon. Then we're going to delay for 200 milliseconds as a kind of debounce. Otherwise you could end up with more A's than you need. Then we have the digital read 4. So if button 4 is pressed, we're going to do a keyboard print and we're going to print this string. The rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane. Now this uses the double quote, so keep that in mind. If you're sending a single character with the keyboard write command, you need to use a single quote. And if you're sending a string or a group of characters, you need a double quote and the print command. And then our final one, digital read 5. This is going to send the hex value for the return key. So we're doing a keyboard write because keyboard write sends one character at a time and that hex value is 0xb0. Now you can find uh, the hex values for all of the ASCII characters and 
for different command characters online. And then we do a keyboard end. Like I said, it's important that we keep this keyboard begin and keyboard end only in the part of the program where you're actually reading and using the keyboard. Otherwise, you could lose control of the computer. So, that's it. Let's take a look at it in action. Okay, as you can see, we have the keyboard emulator set up here and we have the serial monitor window open. So we press button three. And we get the letter A. If we press button four, we get our string. And then if we press button five, we get a return, which as I just found out, kind of screws up this window. See if I press A or B again, nothing happens. So we just have to close it. Wow, that's interesting. So anyway, there you have it. I hope this was helpful, and if you like it, please give me a thumbs up, share it, and comment. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what the heck are you waiting for? You gotta get in on that drawing and get yourself an Arduino Zero, which we're giving away on St. Patty's Day. Alrighty, see you guys next time.